Can I ask you a question? Are you ready to get and keep momentum in your business? I hope so, because it's Penny Elliott here, your host, to having the perfect mix of the woo with the do. If you're ready to create the life that you want through a business designed by you, then tune in. Welcome to the Get Momentum for Online Entrepreneurs podcast with my ho- with me, your host, Penny Elliott. This is the show where we match the woo with the do and don't always get it right, so it's fine. Um, it's the perfect mix of mindset and strategy to get fast success in your online business so you can finally live your best life and the life that you thought you were going to when you first started your business. And so today I have the amazing Abby Gibb um, with us, which is very exciting to have her on because actually we've met, well, we were in the same place um, and uh, back at Funnel Hacking Live when they um, revealed the Underground Railroad um, movie, which was um, really harrowing to me sitting there 16 weeks pregnant in the audience watching um, child sex trafficking being exposed on the screen thinking, wow, I now have a huge responsibility to look after someone else on many more levels than just um, breastfeeding and changing nappies. Um, And so it's really lovely to have you on the show, um, Abby, and re sort of cross paths. We didn't actually meet each other there, but it's funny how the universe brings people together. And um, you are now doing some phenomenal work with um, helping people express their stories online and get really good PR about it. And that to me is really, really key because I often talk to Um, people on the podcast and my clients about how you have to be authentically yourself because when you're selling people can smell bullshit right they can they Mm -hmm. can smell the bs and if you're trying to be something um that you're not they will be able to see that it's much easier to tell your story and be completely authentic to you and even though that may feel slightly uncomfortable in situations, people can really resonate with that. They trust that. And then handing over their credit card to buy whatever you have on offer is so much easier. So um, it's been really lovely chatting to you before we started recording, but you obviously have a formal introduction of like what you do and who you serve. So over to you, Abby, let us know. Okay, fantastic. Okay, we'll do the fancy intro first, Penny, and then we can like talk the real stuff. So Uh, Thank you, by the way, for having me here. And like Penny said, my name is Abby. I am an Emmy Award winning former TV journalist, which means I did all that fun, fancy stuff on camera for the first decade of my adult career. So I've been on NBC, CNN, Fox, Al Jazeera America. And I won that Emmy, as Penny was talking about, because of child sex trafficking. I had done an investigation into how it become really prevalent here in the States. Um, and it become a tourist attraction that people from all over the world were flying to Oregon for child sex trafficking. And so it was an investigation that led to changes in state laws and then eventually the Underground Railroad um, nonprofit. So it was a huge eye-opening experience for me. And that was the first time I discovered the power of amplifying other voices and why it was so powerful to truly share story first and foremost. And then in my latest TED talk that's just been released, it's titled Share Your Shit, which we'll go through, uh, The Answer to a Connection Star of Society. So exactly what Penny just said, um, it's so important to, I say in your shit, share your story, find your humility, live in your intuition and tell your truth. Mm -hmm. And it's through those four pieces that we find honest human connection. And when it comes to our business, connection is the currency of our business. It really makes the sale inevitable when we can truly make people feel connected to our story, that they see our humility, that we live into that intuition because these days we're wanting to share that. And that is a big part of who we are as leaders and then our truth, right? And so I help uh, purpose-driven entrepreneurs like Penny and probably like a lot of you that are listening, I help you to unlock your shit and how to share it on multiple platforms and how to make an impact and an income and have a ton of fun while doing it. That's me. Amazing. So instead of being a hot mess on the internet, sharing your story, you need to get your shit together. Yeah. <laughs> get your shit and- together and then share your shit and then just have a great time doing it and understand how to use different platforms, 
but are different ways, right? So here in this podcast, an amazing opportunity, speaking for my TED Talks, great, social media, magazines, all of them work in different ways. And I help people to craft a strategic plan of how to use their story and then how to make that go back into their income categories. So that of course, together the wheel, right? Of the impact, the income and the wheel that moves it. I call that the visibility. So that's the three pieces that I teach. Excellent. So I think you've pretty much answered like the first question that I generally ask people on the podcast is, um, you know, we're all about creating consistent clients here. Um, and so how do you create that consistent flow and what your secret source is? So obviously it's about sharing your um, story and creating connection. And interestingly enough, you said that I've just um, had a bazillion friend requests. So thank you very much, everyone who's been listening and, um, and enjoying the podcast. That's fantastic. I you know, obviously add you all and, um, and send a little message to say welcome and thanks for listening. So keep doing that. That's totally great. But I've had a few people um, just come straight back to me with like, oh, thanks. Here, do you want to buy this, 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 and this, and this is what the, I offer? The, the, yeah. Right? And so I just did a post on it. I was like, seriously, the, the ironic uh, moment about that is that is not how you make connection with people that is not how you sell things so mm -hmm. interestingly enough they're doing it back to the person who actually is the person that should show them how to do it properly <laughs> to to get do it, right? yeah. Yeah. So I think the first piece um in what how I teach is let's just look at the story yeah so everyone's mm -hmm. like I, I say after being pitched on average about 25 times a day for a decade as a journalist mm -hmm. and having my own tv shows I know two things for sure. Everyone has a story and almost no one knows how to sell it. Yes. And people have to buy into your story, right? To do the action of whatever you want them to do in the story, right? So like, what are the, what's the secret sauce as you're asking me of the story? Mm -hmm. So it comes into two parts. And the first part is the vulnerability. That's mm -hmm. that authentic, like Penny brilliantly is saying, you can smell the shit far away, right? So it's like, yeah. when you bullshit people, when you're just being not authentic and not yourself, like we can tell. So it's that authentic sharing of the story of that, of that hook that we know is going to resonate with our ideal client. So for instance, I know that one of the biggest reasons that holds people back from massive success is not the fact that whether or not they're talented, it's that a, they don't know how to craft a signature story. They don't know how to sell their story. Second, they're actually really afraid of being visible. They're afraid of what other people will think. They're afraid of what their partners may say. They're afraid of losing friends. So it's actually, they're more afraid of their light than their dark, right? And then yeah. another one is they don't think people are going to believe them because they don't have a uh, major, huge, like hundred thousand person followings, or they don't have huge top rated podcasts. So they think uh, they don't have enough quote, whatever for someone to believe in them. Yeah. So, yeah. so what I do is I, I, when I share a story, I speak into that exact fear. Mm -hmm. I share a time when I was in the same spot, I was in the same boat and I share that of the two sides to the story. I share that, that vulnerability, that authentic side to it, right? Like how I had dreamed of giving Ted talks and true story, Penny, the <laughs> in the mic check, uh, the day before my first Ted talk, I stood on the red carpet, just like you see, you know, and you I'm know thinking, the red I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to be the next Brene Brown. Like, here I go. Right. And like, here it is. This is my big break. And I stand on this red dot. And then I feel something in my stomach. And then something gurgles in my stomach. And then I almost poop my pants. I had to run to the bathroom, Penny, and poop my life, my fear, my doubts. <laughs> I, I swear it was an exorcism. Like, <laughs> I don't know. But I'll tell you why you did it in a minute. But yeah. Yep. And at least it was the day before and not on the actual day, right? So I share that story because it's like sometimes people hear these big fancy accolades they have and they think, oh, she couldn't possibly be nervous. So she can do it, but I can't. And so I share this story as this authentic connection, right? To how they would feel. Then the other piece that I have with that, yeah, is that once you teach, one in your story, once you have that authentic connection, that vulnerability component, then you get to teach the expertise, which is how did I take that story and what did I learn from it and how can you duplicate that? So we go from story into message, right? Yeah. What did I learn? So I learned that I can take messy inspired action, that I will never actually be ready, that I can poop my pants and still do it. 
and it's going to be okay. Right. Yeah. And then the movement, right. So we go from story to message and then my programs are all called movement makers, right? So we go from story to message. And then how do we turn all of that into a real movement? Well, that's how somebody else can take this vulnerability and these action steps and start to take them out for themselves. Right. So then the next piece is, well, how do you do that for you? And I would ask you today, what is one messy inspired action step you can take closer to your dreams? Right? Like what is one thing you can do? What is a big goal or dream you can do? And what's one closer step you can take to that? That starts a movement of people first believing in their own story, second, believing it's worthy of being shared, and third, knowing someone will actually listen and take action on it. And that creates a movement, right? So that's kind of the piece that I love to teach of how we can start that authentic shit, the real shit. We can start with that story first and foremost. Definitely. And the, um, I mean, I've been a journalist for years and years as well. Yep. And a magazine yep. editor at IPC Media in London and things. And I too used to get pitched all the time. I worked in a cycling magazine and running magazine. So there's always like, can I free this? Can I free that? Can I free this? Right. So I, did this I did this event and I think you should write about it. And so I, I did have a course called Get Your Name in the Headlines. And it's exactly that. Like, why would you sit down and read your story? Mm-hmm. What makes you special? Think about that. Like when you pick up a magazine, do you read the ads? No, you don't. No. Right. You read the stories. And what do you read? You read about like the real vulnerable in depth stuff. Mm-hmm. And then the action points are sometimes very short at the end, but you have to show that authenticity first. So I love how you said, you know, you, you have to connect with authenticity and then create the movement from that. Exactly. Yeah. Like you start with the story. And when people are like, well, what story do I tell? I say, let's, let's reverse engineer this and go back to your ideal client. Right. Mm-hmm. So if my ideal client is a movement maker aspiring mm-hmm. to be right there, I call them purpose-driven entrepreneurs, those that give a shit about the world and who get shit done. So those yeah. are my only people I speak to. So <laughs> all, of you, all of you have these massive big hearts and huge goals. So then I'm like, all right, what, what are the stories that I know they're feeling right now? And how can I mirror that back so that they feel seen and heard in these stories? And then how can I find the most, most pivotal down to the most raw, authentic moment? So another story I share is about how I found myself sitting on my kitchen floor in like Target underwear, eating very overpriced shaman blessed almond butter from Whole Foods, crying into my into my almond butter, right? And I always say like, she's, yeah, Penny's laughing. If you're laughing at home, because you're thinking when you emotionally eat Penny, right? It has to be like the jar of peanut butter or the tub of ice cream. Like that's the serving size. And so I'm feeling very sorry for myself. And in that moment, I blurt out for the first time, me too. And I say that in between stuffing my face full of this (laughs) almond butter and tears like mixed, right? And I'm on this kitchen floor and it's a very non-ceremonial moment. And it actually was one of the pivotal moments of my life. And so, yes, I share that story because A, it's funny, right? It's funny because we've all been there because you can think right then and there, okay, I might not have cried in my almond butter, but I've cried in my car. I've had a moment where I've said, what the fuck's happening in my life? you know, in the shower, you go right away. So from that moment of authenticity, the next component is you create instant connection because someone else is relating that type of story to theirs. And they're instantly actually playing back their moment, like of whatever your last ugly cry was. Yeah. I'm doing that right now. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. So then we instantly create a bond. And then from there, right, we get the next big piece that we want to have, which is feedback. Yeah. That's what we're getting people to say, oh my gosh, Abby, yes, I understand. Here's my story. Here's how I feel. So when we do this on social media, for instance, that's how we get those big engagement numbers, the, ma- the numbers that really matter. That's how when we're on stage, we get people that can't take their eyes off of you. That's how in a podcast right now, hopefully you haven't been bored and checking your phone because you're like, oh my gosh, this chick is talking truth into mm-hmm. my story right? So it's really, again, about first starting with a key piece of reverse engineering what your ideal audience needs to hear, a story that creates connection that then creates engagement. And that's the secret sauce. Yeah. And also that's the, um, that's the difference between on a call or someone hitting the buy button or however you're selling your products online. Mm -hmm. That's the difference between the, I got to have it right now. Yep. Versus the, 
hmm, I'm not sure. I think I need to go and ask my husband, Let me my mum, my auntie, or my budgie, <laughs> or have a chat with my teddy bear, um, or like write 45 affirmations and sit down on my prayer cushion for three hours. And then I'll come back to you. Can you email me the details? Oh my God, I love you so much. That's, yes. That's the difference because you all know when you go to buy something, you're like, yes, I've got to have that. That is it. And it's because you've had that connection. You've had that feedback back and you completely implicitly trust this person. Whatever they say, you're going to, you know, completely follow and trust that person because they've told you something relatable and you're like, shit, she's like me. I want to be like that. Right. I want to be like that. She's, she's like me. She started where I was and look where she's gone now. So I want to do that too. That's, it's going to work. And I if call you that, um, created yeah. that, then yeah. in the, in your gut, you know, when you get that, mm, not quite sure mm -hmm. that's a no right and that's because you're not quite sure whether they're saying what I hear what they're saying but I don't feel what they're saying Ooh, right yes. and that's the gut feeling that's the gut feeling that gets a no right mm -hmm. so there's mm -hmm. only two ways to um, orchestrate a sale either you create the dance or the other person creates the dance and so by having the story and the connection and the feedback, then you're creating the dance and they're dancing can, with you. Can we get into the woo for a second of the do? Yeah, of course. Honey. So this is another, here's my woo part of, of my do, uh, which I love that saying that you have. Um, when we speak, our words carry a vibration. They're powerful, mm -hmm. yeah? So mm -hmm. when we fully embody what we're saying. And I know that my, whatever it is, my core offering, my story, um, I know that it's going to help the right certain person. And I trust that I'm embodying and holding the vibration of that truth. That's how people then when they're reading it, they feel in that gut, the vibration. And I can't tell you how many times, Penny, I get a fuck. Yes. Hell yes. Full body. Yes. Here. Mm -hmm. I didn't even ask how much it was. Take my credit card. And it's how I teach the sale component of this is like you share to sell, right? So it's just like, you're just really believing and holding the vibration of your truth, of your story, right? You found the humility, you're sharing your intuition right here, this vibrational truth. Mm -hmm. And it's a no brainer. It becomes a no brainer for people and the right people will be attracted. And other people are like, Abs, you're not my person. And I'm like, I wish you all the best. Namaste, have a nice day. Like whatever, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> but the right person consistently comes to me and it's like, I don't have to sell. They're like, they, my biggest goal, which I hear consistently is Abby. It's like, you made this program just for me or your sales page felt like you were talking just to me. And I'm like, perfect. That means I really understand. And you feel loved. Do you feel really cared for that? I've built this thing to help you get where you want to go. And the piece that you just said, I call relatable attainability. You relate to someone, you can tell that they're no bullshit, that they've been where you're going. And then you mm -hmm. want to attain wherever they're at. And that's the piece is all of us as authorities, we want to, we want our audience to feel relatable attainability. And that's what starts with sharing your shit. Yeah, definitely. You've got to start at an equal common ground. Amazing. Yeah. 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 Well, so <laughs> there's the secret sauce, everyone. So you can, uh, so you can definitely hit the show notes. We'll put all that down there so that you can um, start to think about what it is that your ideal client, what your ideal client is. And then um, as Abby said, reverse engineer that back to a story that's relatable to them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So something else that we like to um, share on this podcast is, um, and it, and, and it, I guess you've already given a couple of examples. So when have you had to really dig deep to get momentum in your business after a setback? Because business isn't this linear line of just, you know, oh, I did $10,000 last month in sales. So I'll do 11 this month and, and then next month I'll do 12 and next month I'll do 13, right? And there's too many people in the online space standing in their fancy garage with like millions of cars and uh and so leased yeah. by the way that they don't even own <laughs> yeah private jets now which crack me up because you can't go anywhere in them anyway right. um <laughs> so all those photos yep. delete um and it's just not true and it sets up such a precedent for so many people out there who are trying to uh build their businesses and feel like they're failing all the time because they're not getting month on month on month growth so mm -hmm. i like to call the bs on that in this podcast and yes. ask all of my guests to tell me how have you had to like after a setback how did you like right abs i've got to 
rejig my brain here and, uh, and get momentum back in your business? Great question. Thank you. You're the real deal because I also like when people say, oh, I had a six or seven figure launch and I'm like, well, how much did you spend to get that? (laughs) It's also like people like ClickFunnels, they'll have like two comma club, but then they literally have $4 in their account because they spent a million dollars on ads to get the million dollar ClickFunnel thing. So first off, when I tell you shit, like numbers that I'm going to say right now, there are numbers I took home that I live with, right? Like they're not like in the bank. unicorn number. Okay. That's yeah. really important. Thank you for saying that. I really want to bust that myth. Um, so first thing, I don't have a glamorous story. Uh, I, the business that I have now that is thriving because I'm in full alignment with my purpose and my voice mm-hmm. has only happened because I'm standing, as I say in one of my Ted talks, I'm standing on a pile of no's that gave me greater perspective. Okay. And that's really fucking important. I'm not trying to be like a Hallmark card, but like shit was not cute for me, Penny, like not cute. Okay. So like I had four failed businesses before I got to this one. Yeah. When I say failed, like, like hard, break your nose, like break your stiletto heel on cement hard. Like it shit was not cute. Okay. So first foremost, got to say that this is not my first time at the rodeo. All right. Second time, second thing is that I really chose this time when I built this business that I had no plan B and I've heard that shit before. And I'm, I can say this in total alignment now that like, I truly was like, this is it. There's no, there's no moonlighting as a copywriter somewhere, or I'm going to take this not ideal client. Like I was like, I'm doing this and I'm going all the way in and that's it. I'm only doing that. And I will say that it was because I had no plan B. I refused. I started with no clients. I had no email list. Okay. I spent half of my savings on a program on a, on a business coach made me want again to poop my pants, lots of pooping in this episode, apparently. So wanted to poop my pants <laughs> Super scary. and I made really lofty goals that I thought I didn't even want to tell anyone out loud, Penny. Cause I was like, no one's going to believe me. I don't like, I don't even know if I believe myself. And six months in, I was making six figures and we're, we're set to do a seven figure year. So it's, it's been a beautiful, huge ride. And the honest to God truth is that a, I had, I had no plan B Two, when shit got hard, I just knew, all right, pivot, pivot, but not pause. Right. So like, maybe this offering isn't going to work right now. Maybe I need to offer this course for free. When you sign up for this thing, maybe I'm going to, am I really doing enough webinars? Have I really shown up on social or have I just told myself I've shown up on social? Mm. Have I really done sales calls? Or do I just want to say like, no one's buying how many sales calls have you done today? Abs reverse engineer. The last piece I teach in the business side of my, of business coaching is a three C's. So every day we have a thousand things as entrepreneurs that we could do in our to-do list. And we kind of like Sundays, we like have this great list color coded, but we're going to go all in. And Wednesday we're like, fuck my life. Like all of it's gone to hell in a handbasket. And I just want to drink wine and say, fuck it. <laughs> people are laughing at home. Cause they know it's true. So the three C's to like use as a filter through the day, when things are getting really rough and you're like, fuck my life, use the three C's. First one, cash. Okay. Cash is the oxygen of our business. So if you're going to bitch to me about what your business is going like, we'll reverse engineer the number. If you want a 10 K month, how much do you have to hit every single day? Or how many clients does that equal? Mm -hmm. Then I want you to triple the amount of sales calls that you need to do to get that number. And if it's more than that, you need to start working on your sales conversation because it's not them. It's you. You can't close. That's on you, right? Got to go back. Like, do you understand your ideal client? Do you understand their pain points? Can you share stories and honest truths about that? Or do you sound like a used car salesman, right? So like get back to the cash first and foremost, always first and foremost. Second piece is your community. Those that already have invested in you, those that are watching your Instagram stories, those that have already bought, that have already opted into your email. How are you serving them on a daily basis? Are you showing up for them? Or are you just telling yourself that? And then the last piece is connection. Mm-hmm. So like what makes you come alive, right? For me, like getting out into the forest or going for a run or being with my family, those things like remind me why I'm human. And we tend to, especially as women, put ourselves last and get burnt out. So just even carving 15 minutes that feel like really Penny Elliott time, you know, just like your own personal time every single day makes it so that you can go 10 times harder when your back's against the wall, rent's freaking due, and you better figure your shit out. Like 
that's what I've done. And I, there's no, I wish I could tell you there was a magic bullet penny or this one moment, take my one hack. Like, no, <laughs> it's not, it's not. It was no plan B, work your ass off, stay closest to the cash and, and remember why you're doing this and serve your community, consistently serve your community and hold yourself accountable. Like, don't, don't tell yourself, oh, it's just not working. Like, oh, uh, like, well, okay, lady, like, what have you done today? Yeah. Like, oh, well, yep. I, I like did a podcast and I wrote an email. Cool. Did you get on sales calls? Did you attempt to get on sales calls? Like, have you gone on social today? Are you offering a webinar? Did you write a sales email? Like, yeah. come back to me when you've tried all those things until then, like, namaste, see you later. Yeah. Right? Well, that's part of the consistent client formula. Exactly that. So yeah. And I love how you said um, the three C's and we'll pop them in the show notes for you so that you can write them all on a post-it note and stick them on your wall in front of you. Um, but the, the real big one I find is cash. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a saying that if you don't have sales coming into your business, you've just got a fancy Instagram account. Oh my God. And yes. So many yes. people hate it when I say that because they're like, Oh no, you know, and I'm like, well, if it activates you, it means that you're not doing it right. Sales is the breath in your business. And now that we've gone through this COVID pandemic and I can kind of say gone through here in New Zealand, cause life is back to normal. We don't have it here, but obviously everywhere else has got it. Um, you can understand how much you've taken air for granted and yes. the fact that your lungs work, right? Yes. So you don't take for granted, which is coming back to your three C's listeners, is your community and connection because that is what helps fund the air in your business, the cash. So I love it, the three C's. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the best advice I could give you. I know it sounds like tough love, but I just, I really want everyone to succeed and I want them to succeed knowing they did it, not because they lucked out, got a fast break, like, oh, my one secret hack, like, no, it, there's, it's work, y'all, it's work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, um, generally, if you scratch the surface and join a high-level mastermind, they're not doing the, like, surfing during the day, well, they might be surfing during the day, but they're also up to, like, midnight, that night, yep. waking up the hours, you know, it, it's got to come from somewhere, so, uh, yeah, practical. exactly. Yeah. Like I love you, Tim Ferriss, but most of us are not doing a four hour work week. Yeah. <laughs> Although okay. when I had Josh, I did keep my business. Uh, I mean, I still have Josh, um, my little boy. I did do six hours a week, but uh, it was keeping the doors open. It wasn't growing the business. Exactly. Right? And that's totally a beautiful place to be in. And we can yeah. like live in that kind of time abundance. But for those of us that if you're sitting there and you're like, abs, my back is against the wall. Holy yeah. shit. I'm going to tell you like the Tim Ferriss four hour week thing can come again at some point, but this is not that time. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. When you've got yeah. savings, you are all good. Right. Yeah. So, um, if, uh, so I guess to wrap this up, just what sort of legacy are you wanting to create and leave in the online space? Hmm. I love that question. I also told Penny to leave these a surprise. So I wouldn't know what these, these questions were. The legacy that I want to lead is that, um, I would love to know that when people say the word media, they don't cringe, but instead they get excited. I would love them to think, oh, the media, what an empowering, healing, energizing space instead of what a, a place to tear down and to, you know, have fear and negativity. And before you roll your eyes and think I'm like super hippie kumbaya, uh, <laughs> I would just want to remind you that we look at things like the Me Too movement, like Black Lives Matter here in America, um, that all start because people share their stories yeah. consistently. And that today, more than ever, right, Black Lives Matter started now because people were filming um, George Floyd, for instance, right? So racism has always been an issue here in America. Um, it's just that it's being filmed and it's being filmed by each of us. And we all have the now, the power. We are the media. And mm -hmm. so we each have the responsibility and the potential to heal it. So if you want to see it a better tomorrow, it starts with each of us. There's no one behind us. And so I hope to leave a legacy that, that has changed the word media and what it can do positively for the world. Amazing. Well, so I think you're already, there you go. <laughs> I think you're already on your way and uh, we'll put the TED talk um, link down below as well so that you guys can have a look at that because obviously that is 
you know, legacy building, having having the red dot underneath your feet. Um, so how can people get in touch with you? Oh, I'd love them to come hang out with me. Two places, same name, Abby Gibb, A-B-B-E-Y-G-I-B-B. You can find me on Instagram. I'm a real human. Like, I actually talk to you, so please hang out with me. And you can head over to my website, abbygibb.com. And I've got lots of freebies there for people too. So they can just hop in there. Free trainings and downloads and all kinds of great stuff. Okay, cool. So um, usually we say, well, like, what gift um, do you want? Or have you got a, a program coming up that the listeners can jump into? Yes, or, both. Absolutely. Yeah? So I have a free training that you can have when you head to my website. Um, there's a free training right at the top of the website. And it's how to get booked on stages, TV, and podcasts, mm-hmm. even and especially during a pandemic. So believe it or not, this is a great time to grow your speaking mm-hmm. career um, and how to use media. So that's free. You can head there. And then I also have what's called a movement maker mentorship program. It's a monthly mentorship and it's open right now. We have people from seven different countries all over the world, learning how to turn their story into real messages and having a community. And you get to learn from massive, very big, fancy entrepreneurs teaching us how that works. And I would love to see more people there. It's a my low cost offer. I'd love to have more people there and hanging out. Amazing. All right. Well, we'll pop the links to both of those um, in the show notes. So you can dive into it. And if you've been thinking, oh, but I don't really have a story, then this is like the reason why you should jump on that link get in there and get involved because, you know, people buy people. I always say that they don't buy services, products, bits and bobs, people buy people. Okay. So you need to be a person to be bought. So jump in. Yes. Ooh, yes, Penny. Thank you. Well, sell for me. (laughs) Okay. So the last soundbite (laughs) is the last soundbite. What is your favorite one-liner that you give yourself daily to get momentum in your business? I fucking got this. Oh, nice. Because we've had, we've had three people that have been guests on this podcast that have said, I've got this, but they've never said, I fucking got this. And that's the extra added bonus. It's like a little (laughs) sad. I'm definitely not going to make a 52 card pack of like, um, everyone's (laughs) sayings because, uh, yeah. Well, thank you very much for being, um, on here and um, sharing with us and um, just all your expertise um, and you know you really are leaving that legacy in this online space um, the media is really close to my heart um, obviously being in it for so long and uh, so yeah I'm kind of like the devil on the planet I've been in media and sales um, so I don't really get asked what I do when I'm out for dinner <laughs> Because people don't really like either of the two professions that I've been in. So I'd love it if you could change that view and I'll change the view on sales and we can like conquer the world together. That would be beautiful. I'm in, Penny. Thank you for having me. No worries. All right. And everyone join us um, next week when we've got another special guest um, and you can grow your woo with your do and have some great strategy and mindset to grow your business. Thanks, guys. If you love the woo with the do and you want to dive deeper into how you too can get and keep momentum in your business, then join thousands of other online entrepreneurs like yourself and head on over to Amazon and grab a copy of my book, Get Momentum, your ultimate guide to create 100k in 100 days without fear, overwhelm and burnout. And while it's being delivered to you, you'll have time to leave a five-star review of the podcast before you head on over to the next episode.